Hi there. Is there anybody here that suffers with back problems, fibromyalgia, diabetes type 2, lupus, autoimmune disorders, or are you just generally feeling run down and lethargic? Anyway, I'm here today to talk about natural health remedies and diets that can naturally help to heal you. I will make it clear that I'm not a doctor, but I did qualify in my business as a weight loss coach. And I have researched a lot of things that have helped myself. Um, but I will advise to please chat with your GP on some of the following issues that I mention. Anyway, I'm here to talk a little bit about my own health, health issues and how I have helped myself. So I guess you could say that things started when I was approaching the age of 23, back in November 1993. I suffered with abdominal pain I was in excruciating pain and it hurt so much to even laugh. Um, so I left work, I went straight to my GP, did a urine test and they thought I had an ectopic pregnancy. So I was rushed to um, the hospital, had an abdominal scan and I actually had um, an ovarian cyst removed and it was the size of a uh, small, uh, a tennis ball or an orange should I say uh, needless to say it took around six weeks for me to recover it was very painful and I couldn't go to work or lift anything um, life went on for a bit um, then back in 1997 I had the same sort of symptoms again when I saw my GP uh, said that I suspected another cyst having previously known the pain, of course. So I was referred to um, the hospital for another scan. Needless to say, when I had the scan, they said that I had what they call a milk cyst. So there can be different types of cysts that you can get. Um, some will just continue to grow and grow and some will um, flare up and flare down equally. So it was the worst six weeks of my life because I was told to come back in six weeks and to, you know, see how things would go, basically. Uh, I was terrified that I'd have to be cut open again, but luckily the milk cyst was just milk cyst that naturally dissolved. So I was very pleased about that. Um, but I was also told um, at that scan, um, before I had to wait the six weeks, that my, my liver was fatty. Um, so I, I suspect really that in that ordeal of those six weeks, it was in the summertime, I went and switched to eating a lot of salads, a lot of grapefruit. And uh, needless to say, when I went back for the other scan after the six weeks, um, not only did my cyst resolve itself, but my fatty liver had resolved itself too. Um, so then this is the thing really, you kind of get to know uh, the things that go on with your own body. Um, and at the time I was doing shift work um, and I was coming home late and eating all the wrong foods um, like pies and chips late at night and then of course you lay on it all night and you go to sleep. Um, I also noticed that I was eat if I eat, eat a lot of red meat I'd feel very niggly especially in the area where I was prone to having cysts. So. I, I'd always kind of know when I had the start of possible milk cysts and it was red flags basically, it's warning signs that I should change my diet and do something about it. Also by eating a lot of red meat I'd pile on the weight. My job then as a sales advisor selling railway tickets at Plymouth train station meant that I was sat on my backside all day too with very little exercise and the days were long because of the shifts were long which meant that I didn't get time to exercise. Um, my previous job, you know, in the railway, I'd been on my feet all day, so I'd managed to run up and down stairs and platforms and I'd stayed slim. So anyway, in the ticket office, one break time, I was sat down and I spotted a magazine that somebody had left and uh, there was an article written by the actress Martine McCutcheon, who used to play Tiffany Mitchell in EastEnders. She was talking about the blood group diet and how she'd lost um, a lot of weight by adhering to that. And she said that she was type A. 
uh, which is primarily a vegetarian type of diet. I could actually identify with a lot of what she said and she actually said that illnesses are impacted through some of the foods that you eat. Foods can either be toxic or they can be a medicine. So anyway, um, I did some more research on, you know, this blood group diet um, and I bought the book. I also went and gave blood and found out that I am a type blood group A. Um, so here's the book. Um, this one is Eat Right For Your Type by Pete, Dr. Peter Adamo. I can't quite pronounce his name. Um, and also I have one of the other books. I think these are three and I did have the Live Right For Your Type. But I do have, I can't find that one. I do also have the Cook Right For Your Type also by Dr. Peter Diadamo. Uh, so basically to sum it up, um, type O's can eat meat, um, mostly red meat, uh, fish, vegetables and fruit. Uh, the foods that help with weight loss for type O are kelp, seafood, liver, red meat, spinach and broccoli. Um, and what type O's shouldn't eat are wheat, corn, kidney beans, lentils, cabbage and cauliflower. Now myself, uh, as I've already mentioned, I found out that I'm a type A. I can eat vegetables, tofu, seaweed, grains, beans and fruit. And what I shouldn't eat is meat, dairy products, kidney beans and wheat. Foods that do help with weight loss are vegetable oil, soy foods, vegetables and pineapple. Um, so I'll go on to type B in case there's any type B people on here. What you can eat is meat but no chicken. You can eat dairy, grains, beans, legumes, vegetables and fruit. Foods that help with weight loss for type Bs are greens, eggs, venison, liver, licorice and tea. And what you shouldn't eat are corn, lentils, peanuts, sesame oil, uh, sesame seeds, buckwheat and wheat. Um, for any type ABs, um, you can eat meats, seafood, dairy products, tofu, beans, grains, vegetables and fruits. Foods that help with weight loss are tofu, seafood, dairy products, greens, kelp and pineapple. And what you shouldn't eat is red meat, kidney beans, seeds, corn and buckwheat. So there you have it. So there's four blood groups. Um, so that's type O, type A, type B and type AB. So I went and gave the blood um, group diet a chance and I did adapt to it very well. I cut out wheat, red meat. Um, although it says no meat really for type A's, occasionally you can have chicken or turkey. So... Um, I was adapting to, to that basically. Um, my my weight had ballooned to sort of 13 stone in the year 2000 and previously when uh, I was 19, I was like a little tiny Barbie girl. I was only about eight and a half to nine stones. But then I suppose, you know, um, when you're younger, you can eat things like Chinese and have cozy nights in and eat pizza and takeaways um, and I'm I'm about five foot nine tall so I can carry my weight quite well even when I'm heavier I can weigh quite um, a lot of muscle um, anyway I have previously been married and the point of this little story is um, I went to Turkey for a holiday in 19, in, sorry, in the year 2000 actually, in the August. Um, I had the holiday booked for the August and I was determined to lose the weight. And about six weeks before my holiday, 
Um, I hadn't passed my driving test back then, so I used to commute from a place called Tor Point to Plymouth for my job um, by, the, by the bus, actually. And I've got to admit, there was a bus strike. So I used to have to get the bus from Plymouth train station down to the Tor Point ferry. And then I used to walk home. And with every day that I'd started walking, um, the weight dropped off. The weight absolutely dropped off. So within the duration of six weeks, I'd lost two stone. And I have to admit, um, I went on holiday and even though I was on holiday, I didn't eat like a pig. In fact, I always like to eat more fruit and vegetables and salads whenever I'm on holiday and I enjoy the walking around and the swimming. And I lost another half a stone. Um, but upon my return to the UK, uh, after those two weeks all-inclusive holiday, I, um, I started to get a bad tummy. And needless to say, we thought it would be a gastric bug. Um, so much to the point where um, my ex-husband had to take a sample to the hospital. Um, it was awful. So I suspected it might have been salmonella poisoning. And I was off work for quite a while. Um, and then, you know, by the time I went back to work, I was, I'd lost about three stone in, what, about um, three months, I suppose. Um, then the following year, I changed jobs from one railway company to another, actually this time working on board doing the catering. So I was travelling in the buffets on the trains up and down the country, going up to um, Derby, Edinburgh, Manchester, all over the place really, Newcastle. Um, and then I managed to maintain my weight. In 2002, I finally, finally uh, caught pregnant with my son, uh, who arrived into the world a bit early in January, January 2003. Um, and I quite quickly lost, um, lost, the, lost the baby weight. You know, I think I was on the go all the time. I, I Looking back now, I don't know how I did it. Um, and then fast forward to the year 2009 I was living back at, I'd been living back at my mother's for a year after my first marriage ended um, so you know after getting the divorce and some money I moved to a two-bed apartment which I rented with my son but I think I'd been through you know stress anxiety depression um, and basically my weight had ballooned so I started with the concept, new life, new weight. So I dieted and lost the weight back again. Um, lost about at least about two and a half stone, I think. Um, and then I started to feel confident again and I started enjoying my life again. I was going out with my friends, uh, dancing on the tables, <laughs> wearing mini skirts. Uh, looking and feeling pretty good and confident and enjoying karaoke um, but then I think you know I went back down with depression again and went on antidepressants and then my weight went up about another stone again so yeah you do seem to find with me my weight yo-yos I'm up I'm down I'm up I'm down um, and then I got, I got fed up of having sort of little relationships that we were being let down and everything like that so I threw myself um, into work so not only was I working my three days on the trains I was also um, doing a voluntary day at a school because I fancied becoming a teaching assistant so I thought well if I do some voluntary work and then I got on to a course to study my level two and my level three um, you know, I did do some pretty long hours. Um, and then I think, um, yeah, in June 2010, I met my second husband, Darren. Uh, he's my toy boy at 11 and a half years younger than me. It was at a time where I'd had to move out of my lovely rented apartment with my son. And I just started sharing a rented house with my father. Um, 
we were buddying up for financial reasons basically um because he'd had the apartment downstairs so yeah so i wasn't looking for a relationship i was just busy doing my train job my voluntary job my studying taking care of my son and taking care of house duties etc uh but things moved along quickly between myself and darren and i even added him to the holiday that i booked for myself and daniel which was um an all-inclusive two weeks in mallorca so darren came along and we had a fantastic time but needless to say a few months later which was coming up 10 years ago on the 16th of this month it was my father's um birthday and it i was days away from becoming 40. um i was at work coming back from derby to plymouth and i was actually on the train and my trolley um call it tipped over so I wrestled with it and needless to say I um, slipped two of my discs in my lower back um, I never went back to work I was signed off sick I was put on horrible medicines uh, diclofenic amitriptyline kilcodamo nabumatone roboxin tramadol and naproxen um, I was in such pain that I had hydrotherapy in the hospital's pool. I had physiotherapy as well, an epidural in my back. I'd had acupuncture at my doctor's surgery and it was very, very painful. And the only thing that helped eventually was mostly when I saw a chiropractor in Plymouth called Holly. And she had particular techniques that would ease the L4, L5 disc and the L5, S1 discs through like, um, almost like having the scan. She put this jelly on and it would roll around and she'd also stretch out the lower back, almost like traction or something. Um, so yeah, uh, my weight ballooned and ballooned again. I just, I couldn't seem to lose the weight. I could... I could sort of be the type that would eat a grapefruit for breakfast and eat a lettuce leaf in the evening and the weight would just not shift. Um, and whenever I went and saw doctors, they'd say lose weight, they'd reduce me to tears, which was, I felt was really cruel because I wasn't sat at home all day just picking out on crap. Um, I started to get niggly cysty area again. Um, went and saw the doctor, was referred back for another scam. And sure as heck, the sonographer actually said that my liver was also fatty again. And I expl explained to the sonographer that no matter how hard I tried to lose the weight, that I couldn't. And I explained the medications that I'd been on and his response was, that'll do it. In order to lose weight, you have to detox your liver. So I decided... I thought about it, I thought, yeah, all these tablets aren't doing me any good. I'm going to try my hardest to start by reducing it and coming off these tablets. So I did. I started to cut it all down. I uh, started going swimming, which obviously is a gentle exercise for somebody with back problems. And I started watching the foods that I was eating again too. So I managed to lose some weight. Darren and I got married in March 2013, um, but then I went through some trauma and ended up moving down to Newquay at the end of 2014. Um, I let my younger brother stay in a caravan that I had, and that was in October 2015 through to the end of February 2016. He had a lot of issues and I tried to offer him support but it was very traumatic for both of us and he moved away to Scotland and I was very, very hurt. Little did I know that that would be the last time I'd ever see him again in the flesh. So I guess I started to comfort eat because I felt so hurt. Um, in the middle of June of 2016, I had really bad disgust, discomfort when I was urinating. And after a while, I went to the doctors, I did a urine test and was called back to do some more and also about three blood tests over a period of around six weeks. 
I was told that they thought I had type 2 diabetes and that I had too much protein which was indicative of something going on in my liver. I was told to limit the carbs and to eat more meat which I found really odd actually because like I said knowing in the past that red meat and meat used to bring on the ovarian cyst problems I, I thought this is weird. So anyway, I saw a liver specialist at Trelisk Hospital in Truro in the January of 2017. Um, and I was I felt that big and that heavy and that uncomfortable. I just didn't even want to know what the weight my weight was. But thinking about it, I might have weighed as heavy as around 122 kilos. Um, what I found strange was the doctor seemed to think that I didn't have type diabetes, diabetes type 2. Um, and this liver doctor said that I should avoid meats and excessive proteins. He said that I had an autoimmune disease where the body attacks itself. Um, I said that I'd heard that I had fibromyalgia when I was going through a court case but my own GPs had never told me this themselves. Um, anyway, he said that to lose weight, at least 10% of my body weight, and that I would also qualify if I wanted to for a gastric band. I didn't fancy that option. I was just more determined than ever to try and lose the weight naturally. Um, he also said to me that my liver wasn't just fatty, but that I was at the start of liver fibrosis, which is scarring of the liver. It could lead to cirrhosis. So I was now confused and thought, right, okay, so who do I believe? Do I avoid the carbs, as the diabetic nurse has advised me, or do I avoid proteins and meat, as the liver specialist has told me to do? I mean, what do I do? Who do I believe? So I started to research on why your liver can suffer with fibrosis and cirrhosis and it's basically because the liver loses collagen. So I then started researching good foods to eat to help lose a fatty liver and I also researched on how to give your body more collagen because I thought if I can find something that will give me more collagen then obviously it makes sense that it would help um, repair the liver and obviously you do hear from people that the liver can repair itself at least once a month, every 28 days, your liver will go for a cycle. But obviously it might be a little bit more trickier for those um, with fibrosis or cirrhosis because some of the liver will harden up that much and might not break away or do its thing. But I did research that there had been some people that had recovered from um liver fibrosis and even cirrhosis so I thought well you know I, I can't lose I've got nothing to lose just give it a try so anyway to my amazement I read upon a natural mineral called diatomaceous earth which is this I've got some here okay so it's food grade if you're going to get it it is food grade and I think it was either Amazon or eBay, um, I got this one on. Um, you know, even being, um, even for women who want to do beauty treatments, they can use a bit of diatomaceous as a facial scrub. So, you know, it can have various uses. Um, so anyway, I, I also found out about another similar sort of natural um, mineral called bentonite clay and what I've done here is I've used an old empty diatomaceous earth one which I was previously used and I've put the label of bentonite clay I've put the bentonite clay in this one because I, I don't like those little packet things that they come in um, so yeah this one here has got the bentonite clay and this is pale pale Irish uh, and this is for internal and external use. Uh, this one I think also was from Amazon or eBay. So there we go. And also, I say, being a beauty, a beauty advisor myself, 
online makeup artist. Um, you can use bentonite clay as well for detox issues. Um, you can make up a, a proper clay mask, you know, wash your face at the end of the day and do a clay mask from bentonite clay. So that's for a little bit of helpful news for any ladies that might be watching this. Um, yeah, I've gone off the track now. <laughs> so where was I? So I bought them both and found that they were very, very good when anyone was suffering with viruses as well. So I had a friend of mine once that came back from a holiday abroad in Greece and um, she said that, you know, she'd had the shites for a few days and couldn't stop. So I put some in a food bag for her, took it down and I said, there you go, try this. And a few hours later, I phoned her out, are you getting on? Oh, it's stopped now. I was like, brilliant, amazing. My own husband, my son, myself, if ever we get tummy bugs or the poops, or even if you just feel grotty at the start of a code, just take a heaped teaspoon in cranberry juice or water or whatever juice you fancy. I'll do some now, actually. I'll show you. Bear with me. <clears throat> here we go just got a glass I've got some cranberry juice oh, my hubby's here he's sitting quietly for a change he is sitting quiet so of course this is a no added sugar uh, cranberry juice this is just one of ours does one and I'm going to get, I will tell you a little tip. When you get your diametitious earth, never ever use a metal spoon because it has an impact with the negative charge or something. So I use this plastic spoon. Here's my plastic spoon out of the tub. I'm putting it, so you're going to see now. I'm going to do it in front of you. So here's the cranberry juice looking normal. I'm going to pop it in there. I must tell you not to breathe it in. Try and keep it away from yourself. And I'm just stirring it. You don't want to breathe it in. Whichever one you use. Now. This has changed colour a little bit, but I'll tell you what, and I'm just putting the lid on. I went through a tendency of trying this every morning before I'd eat my food. I'm just going to drink it. See, now it's gone slightly pinkish. You can just see a little bit which hasn't quite dissolved, but... Gone not unpleasant at all um, it kills toxins um, so you might wonder what the difference is actually between the diatomaceous earth and the bentonite clay well everything with our health starts in the gut and there's two ways to access in your body, and that's through your mouth or through your feet or both. So if you walk barefoot in areas where, I don't know, maybe there's dog shit and you step in it, you know, there could be parasites from that dog's poo. Gets in your feet, gets in your system, especially if you've got cracks on your feet. And then your mouth, you know. We've got pets, dogs, cats. We've got cats. We love cats. And we smooth them. But if I get up to make a bacon sandwich for my husband or whatever, always got to wash your hands. Because it's what goes from your hands into your mouth. So those toxins, they go right through your body. They go up in your brain and cause Alzheimer's. 
they can cause senile dementia um asthma people get asthma from parasites people get heart problems lung problem problems I and mean, it's all respiratory isn't it um things that go down in your gut you know all the fluke worms they go in your liver that could have been part of my you know fibrosis problem you just don't know so anyway um boil your water you know get fill your kettle up boil it leave it a couple of hours for it to cool and then put it into um like a brita filter i do one i've got i've got one i washed out yesterday i uh i've got this one here i need to fill it up again at the moment i'm going through a phase where i'm just loving um flushing myself out with a lot of lemon lime water this is just one here from uh lidl i think so it's good it's all good if you really really need to keep the parasites gone you might have to go occasionally through a cycle of taking four things that's cloves okay because they kill the babies they kill the baby parasites from start from recurring so you take that half an hour before your breakfast then when you've had your breakfast you can take black walnut black walnut holes i think some people call it and then you take your wormwood and then you can take your grapefruit seed extract so you do this half an hour before your breakfast half an hour before your evening meal you do this for a whole seven days then you have a week off and then you do another seven days and then i think you should do um a detox like this um about every three or six months i think it depends on how badly you might suffer with parasites um you know you can see speak to a lot of ladies that might be going through the menopause um or hormono as well so sometimes you know we can suffer I've, I've gone through the menopause and I went through it early but we can get thrush and, and yeast infections and um, it's it's not pleasant it's, it's candy all stems from cow, candida albicans um, so as I say by doing these four things which you can get on once again I think it's Amazon or eBay uh, they do a deal with three three or four you can buy the grain I think you can buy the grapefruit seed extra I mean you could after you've done this initial week cleanse then had the week off and then done it again I think you could possibly take this every day um, or as I say you can take the dermatitious earth every every morning or you could take the bentonic clay every night time because the difference is the diametitious earth will break down the candida okay it will absorb the viruses the bentonic clay does a similar thing uh, the bentonic clay will remo remove aluminium from your body it will also take the parasites off the intestinal walls um, it will once again it will absorb toxins and viruses so that's how you get better it's not how you naturally heal yourself um, what I do want to quickly touch on is um, in 2018 I went for a food intolerance test um, obviously I, I knew pretty certain that you know because I'd been studying the blood group diet being a type A I knew that I, it was going to come up with wheat um dairy and possibly lactose and it did so i'm intolerant to wheat gluten dairy lactose but i think it said i can have barley um i think you know if i hadn't have been allowed barley i um would have i think i was almost like one off being a celiac basically um so i'm just gonna have a quick little skull here so when we talk about vegetables, fruit and vegetables, um, 
are appropriate for different blood types and also are appropriate for people that have different intolerances so I'm actually going to when I can I'm going to go and do my food intolerance testing course and I'm going to practice it on people as a living you know so I'm a I'm intolerant to uh, banana according to this um, lettuce pea nightshade family things such as uh, pears peppers potatoes uh, swede, tomatoes, aubergines, paprika, mushrooms um, but uh, oh yeah lamb, pork, it says here turkey uh, and then on my other things it says barley, corn, oh sorry corn, oats, rice, rye, wheat cheese, eggs, lactose, milk cows, milk goats, uh, yogurt cows, um, beer, lager and red wine. Uh, but it says I could have quino, buckwheat or f um, flour, millet, but no soft cheeses. But she did say hard cheeses should be okay, like cheddar or parmesan. I do also know that I'm fine with mozzarella. I'm fine with um, halloumi. And I'm fine with feta. So I would suit a pretty good Greek diet, to be honest. Um, I'm okay with dark chocolate. So we go on to this list here. Uh, but I'm intolerant to milk chocolate, coffee, beet sugar, cane sugar, uh, yeast brewers and yeast bakers. That makes sense given the um, the yeast infections I've suffered. I'm intolerant to almond, haricot beans, uh, cigarette smoke as well. <laughs> hmm, interesting. Um, it's got E numbers. Ironically, she hasn't put any ticks for me being intolerant to E numbers. But I'm going to quickly just mention that there are a lot of children. More and more children over these past few years have been diagnosed with autism. And is that partly because of E numbers? But also, there is, um, I was going to come to this in a minute actually, there is um, a link between autism and gluten intolerance there's also a link between gluten intolerance and diabetes type 2 now my father's diabetic type 2 and my mother is but like i said my i personally feel that the doctors got my diagnosis wrong because i had a liver specialist saying that it's not diabetes type 2 he seemed to think that you know if you've got uh, autoimmune disorder sometimes the liver actually can um, imbalance your blood sugars so I kind of do a diet now which doesn't involve a lot of meat but equally doesn't involve a lot of the what I call harsh carbohydrates uh, anyway they they said that um, I was deficient in omega-3 fatty acids, um, phosphorus, selenium, vitamin B6 and vitamin D2. Okay, so it's very, very interesting if ever you get the chance to have a food intolerance test done. That uh, This lady that did myself here, she charged about £45 and it took about... No, it took 40 pounds sorry and it took about 45 minutes so all i will say is that um food in test intolerance testing um the idea is that you um lay off it from anything from four weeks to 12 weeks and then you can gradually reintroduce it so obviously i know there's certain things i can never uh, reintroduce again especially if I have got lupus um, because I know damn well that lupus people are intolerant to the nightshade family and also wheat but I do at times have um, porridge again so it's oats because I've got what I do is I use the gluten-free 
Okay, and once again, I think that one there, I don't know, was it Aldi? Was it Alster? I don't know. But what I have every morning, or most mornings, I have the soya yogurt. This one's this one. It's either Aldi or Lidl's. Soya yogurt, I have about half a tub of that with about either, some days I'll have about four spoons of this in a cereal bowl before I tip half of that in. And then what I do is I have some blueberries, okay? Or if I don't have my linseeds, also known as flax seeds, um, they're good for um, cutting out the bad out of your body. I'll have chia seeds. So I'll have, once again, about four spoonfuls of that. So that's my breakfast. I also made adjustments. I have coffee or tea. Um, I have my lacto-free milk. This is from... This one from... Oh, I suppose either old or little. They're both about... Either place are about 85 pence for this. Whereas Asda will charge you about 140 yeah, that's a bit. That's quite a different stuff. I also have the stevia. I mean, I don't like a lot of the artificial sweeteners like candorau or sweet X, but stevia or stevia, I don't know how you pronounce it. It is more of a natural substance. You can also get this in powder form if, say, you wanted to eat a grapefruit in the morning, which I do that sometimes just to make a break from the yogurt. But like I say, because I can't eat bread or breakfast cereal, I do feel stuck for a breakfast. Sometimes I'll do a smoothie, I'll put in pineapple. Um, I, I buy the frozen bags of fruit in the freezer, so I have like berries, um, pineapple, I'll mix it in with cranberry juice. That's another good thing actually. If you're making a smoothie for your children, if you want to try, if you feel your child might have ADHD or autism and you want to try um you know getting them on an even keel with their foods put a teaspoon of diatomaceous earth in the smoothie they won't know they won't even taste it um i've done it to my own son what else do i eat oh yeah i'm just gonna tell you that i also buy the gluten-free pasta i could not believe that in asda yesterday i got three bags of this for one pound twenty you can either have it as 45 pence each, but I say it's gluten-free pasta. So if I'm going to have the odd meal with pasta, I make sure it's gluten-free. The same as um, the same as the rice, basically. Uh, this is the Tilda. Uh, this is gluten-free. That's a basmati Caribbean rice. Or if you like things spicy like I do, you have the peri-peri. Or something else that's quite good for blood group A actually is um, whole grain rice with quinoa. So say go gluten free, try and go lacto free, see if it makes a difference um, on on yourself, on your children, um, makes them less hyper hopefully, calms them down. Um, I've also have some of those fresh soups in the evening. Um, I have soup, some of these packet soups, which are from my own business, and shakes. So yeah, the soups and the shakes. Um, that's helped me lose a tremendous amount of weight. But say, try and eat, just eat a balanced diet, and um, you know, do your detoxes. Um, get the right vitamins, primarily, obviously, from your food, like um, your greens. Obviously, I've got a lot of. Uh, vitamins and the reason that this country and quite often the world you know are deficient um anybody really with an, something going on in their autoimmune system is deficient in vitamin d3 so uh there's vitamin d3 uh, with k2 and what doctors don't tell you is this will pull the arterial plaque out of your bones okay stop hardening your arteries it'll start you know distributing the calcium 
um, back into your hair, skin, nails, where it should be rather than just in your arteries. So take that, a good thing to take with calcium, um, D and K2 is magnesium. So for that reason, I like to do this dose in the evening because mag magnesium actually helps you to sleep. Whereas in the daytime, you take uh, vitamin C and zinc, those two go together. I do tend to take high um, strength vitamin C. Um, you can take vitamin C along with, um, I don't know where it's gone now, so somewhere. I had vitamin, vitamin B was somewhere anyway. You can take B and C together or C and D together or C and vitamin E together. But for some reason, never take vitamins B, D and E together at the same time. And the reason for this is because many of these vitamins have clotting issues. So um, that is why I said earlier, if you have any like um, medical um, disorders where you might be taking medication, whatever advice I'm giving you, double check with your GP first because I'd hate to say to you go and take this if it's going to interact with I don't know say warfarin that you might be on so for that reason just just check it out if with your GP um, as I say I have uh, the little story to my liver story anyway just to sum that back up was um, I changed my diet I started taking these vitamins as well um, I'd go to the gym with my son and we'd do some swimming. Well, we yeah, we sorry, we'd go swimming first and then we'd go to the gym. I'd do things like, like just ride the exercise bike, um, go on the treadmill, maybe do the rowing machine, maybe do some weights with a pole down like that. I'm quite good at those. Um, and I did start losing the weight. I also went for my um, diabetic review which was uh, November 2018 and my liver function had come down by um, 60 points and my diabetes had gone down to borderline um, so I'd almost cured myself however um, last year was the most hor horrible year I'd ever had I had a nasty fall which did a hamstring on my right leg, um, reopened up my back, um, and then, I'd, well, I thought I was getting better from it. I got a bar job, um, I couldn't hack it with the standing, so that ended. And then shortly after that, um, my brother was found dead. Um, and then a few months later, the day before my birthday, November last year, um, my cat died. So. I was due my diabetic review and I just didn't go because I knew down well that the shock of my health, the death of my brother, the death of my cat, I was just going through such inward secret depression and stress and I just felt horrible. Um, I knew my sugar levels would be high. I knew I wasn't right because obviously I'd neglected a good diet, good supplements, etc. because I just wasn't in my healthy zone that I'd previously gotten myself into. So um, when I went for my review in the January, um, the diabetic nurse said how my blood sugars had gone bad again, wanted me to do metformin four times a, a day. And I thought, sod that, nope, I don't trust you guys. So I've had to kind of pull myself together this year, which has been very hard, because obviously we're all in the same boat, you know, all these lockdowns and the current state of corona and everything um although <laughs> you know i'm not going to delve into that um but i've had to pull myself out of depression and try and get back into the vitamin thing try and get into the healthy eating thing and um just get on with it basically so like i said just try and eat healthy diet um 
get your exercise even if it's just a gentle walk or a swim when we can go swimming of course i mean i love swimming and where i live there's two pools there's an outside pool here there's um, an indoor pool here there's a sauna here and i love a sauna that's another good thing to do because it takes all of the toxins out of your body through the steam so soak your feet as well i know i'm a nail technician but soak your feet in some apple cider vinegar okay if you get yeast in your feet all uh, right soak your feet in a foot spa and if you haven't got a foot spa find an old washing up bowl or something but just soak your feet in some apple cider vinegar you can also drink this a teaspoon of it put it in a glass of water um stir it around um that's brilliant for killing yeast internally what else do i use milk thistle sorry i meant to mention earlier that's good for your liver um have a spoonful of coconut oil just literally a spoon it's okay if you use a metal teaspoon i if i stir fry some chicken whether it's a stir fry or frying it up for a chicken curry i will cook my chicken breasts in coconut oil in my wok is also good for oil pulling have you heard about oil pulling let me explain so when i said to you about parasites and toxin internally being the cause of all of our illnesses from diabetes to fibro to asthma to heart disease um i've lost the train of thought now what was i saying darren Oil pulling. oil pulling yeah so oil pulling um is pulling parasites out of your teeth so you can go and brush your teeth okay you can floss your teeth you can use mouthwash and here's some that i've got for my little business okay um that's a new one because i'm coming to the end of my old one swirl your mouth around you see these bits you know especially if you've had a breakfast like i do in the morning mostly when i have my yogurt days with my seeds you're like mm, what's this so um take a teaspoon of that coconut oil like i just did to say you can swallow it but then then take another teaspoon after you've brushed your teeth and just swill it spit it out it will pull any parasites that are trapped in your teeth it will pull them out okay any yeast in your um on your tongue inside your mouth if you've got a yeast infection take some coconut oil as i say this is just asda's own we've had some from aldi we've had some from Lidl's. you can get it most places um it's not very expensive at all so that's another good thing i meant to mention earlier that um the bentonite clay if i have a glass of that in my cranberry juice at bedtime in the same way that you saw me do the diatomaceous earth i'll then go and clean my teeth and they feel quite sandy but do you know what bentonite clay will actually help you remineralize your teeth okay so if you're if you are one of these types like myself that haven't been to a dentist in quite a long time and you think oh i've had ice cream oh my god it feels like i've got a filling take some bentonite clay every day for a good week or two and won't need a fill in honestly it's worked um okay so i'm just going to finish up by saying that as well as taking all these natural remedies um use good products as well try and have like cruelty free um and paraben free products um so you've you within my little business i'm not here just to promote my business as you can see i've promoted a lot of other things here that you know i just buy as a customer at various supermarkets oldy little asda um my the firm i partner with is acti labs and we are paraben free cruelty free so that was the mouthwash we do a whole load of things. We do the toothpaste, we do the hair care, the skin care, the makeup. We do the weight loss. Um, 
shakes and soups and um, fat burner tablets, everything like that. But one good thing that every woman I feel should have, you know, when you get out the shower and you put your underarm deodorant on, this one is Active Labs Pit Stick Anti Pass Brunt Deodorant, and it's free from aluminium chlorohydrate. So these are the cancer causing chemicals that um, you know some underarm deodorants have, and this is paraben free. This is free from all that stuff. Okay. So finally, I think you know we can do things that help calm us down so okay, can I'm just going to show you what I've done so I've got some incense lit today but this one is cinnamon and I've got my candle. Um, I also want to mention that, um, have you ever heard of sound vibration? So I've become a bit more spiritual in my old age. Um, this here is called a singing bowl. And what it does is you bang it. And you bang it again. And that goes to 432 hertz, is it? So I've read up that singing bowls can be good therapy to some people because something to do with the sound that creates healing. Um, I would also mention about the word 5G okay so you to block that out this is what i'm wearing this necklace is orgone or organite and this crystal i got this yesterday this is an orgone crystal as well of all the colors of the chakras from the root chakra up to the crown chakra it's very beautiful what do you think um so to block out the electronic magnetic field shall we say i've got a bracelet on okay which has got black onyx um tiger's eye and hematite this one here's black onyx so i've got my all going on here uh this one here is what's this one again down obsidian i think black obsidian it's just the reiki chakra colors um, you can also wear fluorite um, to block out EMF um, on a necklace or a bracelet or carry a crystal with you. And this one here is called Labradorite. So I wear that one. This one here is, what's this one, Darren? Oh, black tourmaline. Black tourmaline's good for blocking out EMF. Um, I like things like rose quartz. I love my crystals. They're all here. I also like using essential oil, which will say we've got clove. You can put clove oil on your feet. Once again, that might help kill parasites. Tea tree. You could put some of that in your foot spa with the apple cider vinegar. Uh, peppermint. Use a bit of that if you've got a code. I've got um you can make protection sprays with these as well so we got lavender so like the other day my hubby had a headache so i just put a couple drops of this and i gave him a nice head massage and he fell asleep um frankincense lemon and sandalwood so yeah i like my incense i like my candles i like my oils i like my crystals um, a singing bowl so I just like to um, try and stay calm just try and have a good life anyway I um, hope that that 
resonates with a lot of you. I just also want to show you something that you can use to see how much EMF you may have. And that's this is an electronic magnetic field um, sensor. So by switching it on, I'm just going to get my iPad. I got my iPad here, okay. Now if I hover that around, it should start bleeping in a minute. Oh, it's not bleeping, that's odd, isn't it? Or is it because I've got lots of crystals around me and blocking it out? Let's see, hover it around my phone. Will it bleep? Have you got your phone there, Darren? Yes, thank it's you. Not, it's not even bleeping over my phone at the moment. Maybe all the magnetic... <laughs> Maybe all the crystals I've got here have stopped it. But, my God, this... Honestly, honest to God, where's your phone? Can I borrow it, please? Oh, it went red then. Went over my iPad. But it's not very great. It's gone red. Where's this? Is the sound gone on there or something? Also picks up spirits that are in the room. Where's your phone? I've got my phone here. Can I borrow it? Which one do you want? The iPhone. Oh, what? why is it like crossed out from... Okay. Why is it not bleeping? It's a Tuesday today, so wear red. Have a nice red candle my um, cinnamon incense burning and my nice little crystal pyramid which cups out the EMF and I don't know why but my ah hear that Darren's outside the cupboard where the boiler is and it is bleeping so there's high energy in there no, it's a magnetic field. Cause it's a the, magnetic field. Because in the boilers they have a magnetic trap in there. Right. So it stops all stuff going through the pipes. and. Right. The so let's see if it does it over my phone now. I have got these stickers on the back of this phone. There are some stickers you can buy online that will cut out the EMF. So if you near, live near any of these new towers that are being erected... Just try and protect yourself, okay, because I don't trust those new towers. Right, anyway, I'm going to sign off. I'm going to leave my link to my little business in the comments. It's lsjbeautyhealth.com. If you do fancy taking a nosy at the um, deodorant, the shakes, the mouthwash, etc. Um, if you found this helpful, if this resonates with any of you, please feel f free to like, share, subscribe and comment. See you again soon. Thanks. Bye.